Hi friends, welcome back. So we're talking about the moon to moon phase. It's probably the thing that is for most students uh, the most counterintuitive or the one they have the most misconceptions about. So you want to go slow and you want to give the kids this chance to explore with this and be able to, to create, construct their own meaning out of this um, based on experiences rather than you just telling them how they go. Now this is what most kids see. They see the earth, they see the moon, uh, first of all, the scale between the Earth and the Moon is incorrect. The Moon is too, uh, too large in this picture. And obviously this distance is incredibly biased, incredibly skewed. And the real distance would be you can stick every planet in our solar system between Earth and the Moon. The Moon is a small dot right here. The Earth is over here. So that's the scale that we're talking about. Um, in real world, this dot is the Earth. And there's a very small dot on this side that is the moon. That's the scale that we're talking about. The other thing they often don't think about is that the moon is on a very significant tilt. Its orbit is not level with the Earth. It is um, on a tilt. So this is, again, we're trying to build up arguments and reasons against the shadow of the Earth creating the lunar phases. So the fact that it's tilted and the fact that it's far away, again, even on this one, it is not to scale. And they say this, okay, um, this is not to scale. I would have your kids draw that on every image they draw of the solar system, not to scale. Every time, just to help them uh, figure out what we're talking about, that these things are, in fact, cheated in order to fit them in. Now, for this activity, you need a bright light. A lamp of some kind, and you need to put it on a table, usually with a stool on it. You kind of want it to be about eye level or even a little bit higher. Um, this, of course, will be the sun. Okay, so here's our sun, and you're going to put a um, small styrofoam ball on a pencil like this. I would glue, uh, put some glue in this hole first, and then shove the pencil in. Uh, or make a hole first with the pencil and then pull the pencil back out, put some glue in there, because otherwise what happens is the pencil comes out or the kids stick it out, and then they use the pencil to add craters to the moon to make it more realistic, as if you want that, you don't. So, glue them in there, it'll last. Now, by the way, I'm using a larger version of this just because it's easier for you to see. This is the one you're going to give the kids, this is the one you can give yourself. Um, if you have these are much more expensive, so I didn't, wasn't able to buy them for you as a class set, but these work really well. So, the way this works is you are using this as a model of the sun, using this as the model of the moon, and your head is the earth, okay? This only works when I look at my moon. If I'm looking at someone else's moon, the visual's wrong, okay? So I'm on earth, this is my head, this is the earth, this is the moon, this is the sun. And it's the dynamic of these three bodies that are going to change the uh, phase of the moon. Now, what your kids is, they need to hold it in their left hand, and you want them in their left hand. As Grace was talking about, the rotation is correct if you hold it in the left hand. If you hold it in the right hand, because you want them turning the left. So first of all, show them which one's left or right. They want to hold it here, and they can't hold it at kind of eye level. They need to hold it a little bit above their head, and there's an important reason for that we'll get to in just a minute. They're going to be facing the sun, okay, and they're going to hold it at um, just above eye level, okay. If they uh, if they are in front of the light, which is what they want to do, they're like, well, the light is bright, they'll complain about it, they'll put it in front of the light. That's not correct. That would be a solar eclipse because the moon is literally eclipsing the sun, okay. They need to hold it above the light, they will still notice that the moon is dark. So this is the dark side of the moon, this is where we're talking about the new moon. Now the first thing we should be thinking about is, where is the shadow of the earth? Well, the shadow of the earth is behind me. If this is the darkest part of the moon phase though, the new moon, and the shadow of the earth is behind me, clearly it's not the shadow of the earth that's changing the effect of the lunar phases of the moon. Clearly, it's just how the light is in the moon. Essentially, the moon is making its own shadow, 
and that shadow is the face. Once again, holding it above your eyes, so I can still see the sun, but this is the dark side of the moon. Now I'm going to slowly turn to my left, and as I slowly turn to my left, I will notice a thin crescent of light coming up on this side. And again, you can't see this because you're looking at my moon from another perspective. I'm looking at it from the first perspective through my head. But as I turn around, I'm going to see slowly, I'm going to see the moon come up. Now, if I get one quarter turn, I should see the first quarter of the moon. Okay? Um, so the left side, I'm sorry, the right side is lit up. Okay, so this is uh, waxing. And so I've got a waxing crescent, and then I keep going. As I keep turning, I get to the first quarter. I keep going. Oh, now I have a waning uh, gibbous. And then I get to go all the way around. Now, at this point, my head is in the way. The shadow of the earth is covering over the moon. But that's not actually what happens. Remind the kids that the, earth, the moon is on a tilted axis. So I have to hold it above my head. Now, as so my back is to the light, I can see the full moon. That is my full moon back. I can see the whole thing. And then I keep on turning to the left. Sorry, using the wrong hand. And I will notice the shadow creeping from right to left, and I'm moving back until I've got to my new moon. Now, turn that off so you can actually see a little bit. So, put this on a stool or something on top of the table so it's not at eye level straight up. Um, again, left hand, turn to the left go through the different phases, and then once you've kind of had the kids kind of walk through slowly to see how they change, you come back to it, and then start quizzing them. Okay, so everyone should go to a new moon. Well, if everyone's doing a new moon, they should be facing the front, the dark side of the moon is facing them. And then you say, okay, everyone go to the uh, first quarter, and they should have, their right shoulder should be facing the sun. Go to uh, a full moon. Well, the full moon should be the back of the sun. Go to a third quarter. Okay, now my left shoulder is facing the sun. The sun's over here. Okay, and you can do back and forth. You can say, okay, now go to a waxing gibbous. Now go to a waning crescent. You know, go back and forth so they can kind of see what they're And they can peer check each other um, as they go. Remember, if they look at each other's moons, though, they'll see something different. So they're always looking at their moon, but they can look at each other to see how they're positioned left to right. Do this more than once because your kids aren't going to remember it the first time. Look at the basic idea. But they won't be able to see how the, the main phase is going together not very well. So you might maybe a week or so later, or a few days later, take out the light, put them, get them all back together, and just start calling out phases of the moon and see if they can apply this knowledge and then ask them to write down um, what's going on. Whenever you do this, please have your kids, uh, and this is for any complicated activity, have your kids draw something in their journal, talk about it in their groups, write about it in their journal, okay? So label drawings work really well, but discussion and then writing out in words and more pictures, uh, what's going on, it gets them to focus on these activities, it gets them to conceptually map this information in a way that is much easier for them to remember and then use. If you don't do that, if they just do the activity, when they get home and they ask their, their parents, what did you do in school? They said, well, we took the styrofoam ball and we just rigged it around. It was cool. It was the moon. And then their parents say, well, how does that work? I'm like, I have no idea. But if they write it and if they draw it, they're much more likely to say, oh, well, this is what happened. Because, not because they remember their words necessarily, they don't have their paper with them, but just writing it and drawing it is going to more firmly seep that information in their head. And you should do that for everything that's uh, complicated or uh, going against uh, their misconception. Okay, so a couple of misconceptions here. First of all, the moon and the, sun and the earth are way too close. Or in most of our pictures, they're way too close or like this, in which case they should be more like 30 feet apart. Uh, that the moon is on the same orbit as the Earth. It's not. It's tilted. The reason it's tilted, by the way, is it wasn't made at the same time as the Earth, right? There's this whole video I will include in our, uh, by the way, I will include a list of videos, and one of them is how the moon was created when another planet hit our Earth and messed everything up. But they made a moon, which is a good thing, because the moon is probably why we have our life on our planet. Um, so it's not in the same orbit. It's much farther away. And it is not the Earth's shadow that is making the 
you face was the moon. It is just the shadow of the moon on itself. Okay. All right, that's Phases of the Moon. Thanks so much.